Good morning. I want to welcome you all to worship this morning, a special welcome to our guests. If you don't have a church home, we would love for this to be your home. It's a great family to be in, and we'll take you any time we can get you. But we do have one special guest, and I'm going to say, I don't usually call out people that visit um, because, you know, some people would be embarrassed. She won't be because she's been here before, and she uh, stood up here before. Pastor Christine Stockson is with us from Arizona this morning. Um, she was a pastor, the associate pastor here, from 2000 to 2004, right, Chris? Um, and I'm, I'm elated. She and I are seminary classmates, and so it's always wonderful to have a friend. This is her first stop on her sabbatical. Um, on Facebook, there was a big bye, <laughs> a goodbye for three months cake that they gave her last week at, at her church. And so she's coming here first on her way to Luther Ridge. So, Chris, we're glad to have you and Oliver uh, with you with us this morning um and so i am sure she'll stick around and you know say hey to many of you folks on, on your way out of church this morning um we do have a few things going on this morning first off i want to invite um teresa cartner oh you're here um to make an announcement good morning um, as you know, it's only a week away from BBS, and our um, teachers and leaders have been working really hard to get snacks together and stories together and music together and games and science projects, and everything is, is almost ready. But now we need some participants. So if you have not uh, registered for VBS, please do that as soon as possible. We have some sheets out on the VBS table that you can register on paper and drop those off either in my box or, or with Miss Robin, or you can register online. Your, the QR code is right there in your bulletin. Um, I want to say thank you to all of our um, helpers. We've had so many wonderful helpers this year. I am just so pleased, and I know that we're going to have a great time. And Miss Amanda has been working really hard with decorations, and you're going to be, you know, every year we're always awed at what she does. So we're ready for Camp Firelight. Um, also, remember T-shirts. So uh, uh, the helpers, we need your T-shirts in so that we can have them screen printed before Sunday night. And participants, uh, children, bring yours, and we'll have them ready for you before the last night. We have meals Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, and then Thursday night is our cookout and our presentation. So we hope that you can be there, adults as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also want to echo what Teresa said. Um, it, as some of you know, that one of the rooms upstairs in the addition uh, was during COVID converted to a film room that I used to film a bunch of things. Well, now it's sort of been the, the VBS staging area. And so in there now are all of these trees and grass and huge posters. Y'all, I'm telling you, it is going to be something else this year. And so you're not going to want to miss it. And let me tell you about that adult class. It's different this year because I'm not teaching it. Um, so it'll be good. And that means that, um, but who is teaching it is Damian Williams and, and Tony Roof. The, the subject is technology. Because there may be some folks that struggle with their phones or with uh, computers and things like that in the modern days. And so we have some experts. Well, an expert that's going to come in and tell us. And then there's Tony. He'll be there too. Um, but they're going to be teaching about, about ways that, that you can utilize your technology. Um, I know that you can ask your three-year-old grandchild and they'll explain it to you, but this is the best way to go. So uh, let me encourage you, you adults to, to come out for that. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Also, I want to uh, bring your attention to this. It is um, Family Fun Day at Camp Kindred. Now, when it says Family Fun Day, that does not mean just people with children. It means Pisgah Family Fun Day. The Pisgah family is going to be out at Camp Kinder that day, and it is going to be phenomenal. So if you're not going on vacation on that day, come. Come, come, come. We've, we've got um, food. We've got a food truck. We've got rides. We've got a, the, the new swimming pool at Camp Kinder. We've got all those things, and we're just going to go out there and have a great time. And so, you know, 
mark your calendar June 29th from 10 to 4. It will be an awesome time. That's all the announcements that we have except for one. Um, at this time, would all of our graduates um, and their families please come forward? Our high school graduates, yes. Jill, y'all can come up here too if you want. <laughs> you don't have your graduate, but we'll pray for her anyway. We have one graduate that is under the weather this morning, so. I messed this up in the first one. You do not get one of these colors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did too. Um, so uh, if you would, please introduce yourself and let us know what your plans are for next year. I'm majoring in hospitality management. My name is Mary Margaret. I'm going to the University of South Carolina, and I'm majoring in exercise science. I am the mom of Abby McAbee, <laughs> <laughs> and she is going to the University of South Carolina and majoring in exercise science. So if you want to see where our church members are next year, just go to the campus of University of South Carolina. That's right. Shall we pray? God, we give you thanks for these women that have, have been raised up in faith in you. And now as you send them forth, we ask that, that you would guide them and lead them. Be with them all their days. Be with their families as they miss them. And be with all of us. Help us to support them in any way we can. In your name. Amen. Now the... the uh, the afghan that you have been given was lovingly made by Miss Margaret Barfield. And just as you wear it around your shoulders, um, remember that the love of God and the love of Pisgah um, surrounds you wherever you go. So let's give God a round of applause. And thank you to you, Miss Margaret, for all of your hard work. Um, for all As they return to their seats, let us stand for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, trusting in your grace, and we ask that you forgive us Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. May we share that peace with one another.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power restore us to wholeness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Today's first reading is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of Second Corinthians. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as the Lord and ourselves as the slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to the death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the second and third chapters. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful but for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they may accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and I'd like to invite the children forward for some special time together. the same way not too long ago. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are y'all? Good. So who here likes rules? Me either. <laughs> but you know, there's a rule that I heard, and, and since a lot of y'all go to school here or went to school here, you can tell me. Are you allowed to run in the halls? I didn't say, do you? I said, are you allowed to? No, No, you're not. And and so, why not? Because you might trip and fall and get a boo-boo. Exactly. That is exactly right. You might might trip and fall and get a boo-boo. Or, you know what? When When you go to, like, big school, they have these poles between the two doors, and somebody is going to run into those doors. Not, yeah, not, not, to say I've, not to say I've never done it, but, but, but so tell me this. If the rule is don't run in the hallway so you don't fall down, what if the rule was you can't walk in the hallway? Would that make any sense? Yes. Okay, I'm glad y'all get that, but no, would, would it make any sense? It wouldn't, would it? Because if the rule is so you don't get hurt, why would they make a rule that you would get hurt? Well, today we hear Jesus, and you know what? Jesus is actually breaking a rule. I know. It's kind of weird because you wouldn't think that Jesus would break rules, but but here's how it went down. They They were doing things because they needed to eat, and then there was a man who was sick, and Jesus made them all better, but it was on the wrong day. Now, does it make sense that Jesus wouldn't help somebody even though it was on the Sabbath? That rule wouldn't make sense, would it? That's right. And so what we have to remember is that rules are important, but people are most important. And that's what Jesus showed us all, that people are so much more important than anything. Can y'all remember that? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us no matter what. Even when we have a hard time following the rules, help us to always remember that people are first. In your name we pray. Amen. As the children head out for Children's Church, let us stand and sing our hymn of the day.
Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for gathering us here this morning. Prepare us to go out and be your people in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Two and a half months, 75 days from today, I am turning 50 years old. I know. It also means that a little, a couple weeks short of that, AARP is going to start sending me mail. You know, I thought that AARP stood for uh, America's aged, um, rigid population, but that's not what it means. It is American Association of Retired People. But they're sending me mail when I turn 50. Did people used to retire at 50? Was that a, ever a thing? I don't know anybody, and I'm not planning to retire. I, I'm just now getting comfortable, you know? I mean, but at any rate, I figure that if I'm on the second half of my trip to 100, I need to, I need to practice being old and, and a curmudgeonly old man. And, and so, here goes. Back in my day, when it was summer, we didn't get to stay inside where it was air-conditioned. No, our parents would wake us up and send us out the front door and we might be allowed to come back for lunch and to change uh, into a swimsuit to play in the sprinklers um, and then maybe at dinner time and then once again when the street lights came on. Back in my day, we didn't have things like Spotify and Apple Music. No, if we wanted, to, if we wanted a recording of a song, we had to sit around and wait for it to come on the radio and press play and record at the same time and hope that the DJ would shut up so that we wouldn't have him or her talking through half the song. Mm. Back in my day, we used to drink from a, from a water hose and not worry about it. Back in my day, we actually rode our bikes to go places and not just for fun. So, and, oh wait, back in my day, Little Caesar's Pizza had them hot and ready and now it takes half an hour to get a pizza anymore, huh? Am I practicing? Am I good? Here's the thing, though. In my 24 years of ministry, I've learned something. Because older people have always worn the mantle of they don't like change and they're grumpy when change comes about. That is not true. It never has been. Because the reality is the older people have seen more change in their lives than anybody else. I think this current generation of older people have seen more change in the world than any other generation in the history of, this, of the world. For example, they've seen TVs go from no TV to black and white TV to color TV to multiple TVs in the house to cable TV to satellite TV and now to internet television with more things on than you can watch in a million years. They've also seen things like us go from ovens to microwave ovens where you can have food ready just like that. They've seen things like the internet. They remember a day when there was no online. They also remember what it was like to have dial-up. And kids, if you don't live through dial-up, you need to thank God Almighty because here's how it worked. You would plug a phone cord into the phone and then it would make this weird noise and then you would wait for about, mm, I don't know, 10 minutes for one web page to download. And if it had more than one picture, it was going to be about 20 minutes. And then, heaven forbid, someone call while you're online because call waiting or someone else picking up on the other end would kick you offline and all of that hard work and waiting just went to nothing. That was the internet. And now, you can not only just press go and it's there, you can do it on your telephone. Talk about change you've seen on telephone. This is a generation that started with a rotary phone. And then went to the push button phone. And then had multiple phones in the house. Where kids started having their own phone. It was a big deal if they had it in their own room. 
Then they went to, to, to mobile phones, these huge bags that some people would carry around or have installed in their cars. And now there are these handheld computers that not only are, that, that the last thing that anybody cares about is the fact that it's a phone. These are all of the changes that they've seen. And so it's not an older generation that minds change, that fights against change in technology or change in the way that the world works. The reality is the problems that people have, the struggles that we have with change is not about an age range because it can be any generation. What we struggle with the most is the reality that the rules are changing. The way that we think the world should be is becoming different. And I don't care how, how old you are, that's a struggle for all of us. Because the way that we were raised, the way things always were, is not always the way that they are now. And we have rules established for such things, and all of a sudden it's like these rules are just being thrown out the window and completely ignored. I mean... The, the things that we've seen. Let me give you an example. How many of you are still driven up a wall every time you see somebody wearing a hat indoors? Mm-hmm. I knew there were some. How many of you wear hats indoors? Basically every male under the age of 70. Or who was never in the military. I mean, because that's just, that's just a rule that's changed. Now it's like just an accessory, like socks. You know, it's no big deal. But there are certain rules that we not only have as a society, but some that we even back up biblically. And we have for years. There have been all kinds of changes throughout, throughout the world's history that people have claimed in the Bible that have sort of gone by the wayside. Slavery, for instance. Do you know that was protected biblically? How about this? Do we have anybody here who's taught Sunday school? How many of you are women? Yeah. Guess what? That's wrong in the Bible. We have a female pastor in the room that you people call to this church. Mm -mm -mm. That was against the rules. The fact that we have no age limit for communion. Against the rules. All of these things, these changes that we've seen, and, and it's changes that have upset the apple cart of the way that we view society. Things like interracial relationships. Things like the LGBTQIA people. There's all kinds of things that, that we deal with and struggle with from day to day that, that we believed are one way, and somehow it's like the world is leaving us behind. And this, I believe... It's how the Pharisees were feeling in today's gospel reading. You see, Jesus was going through the fields with his disciples, and they started plucking heads of grain. Usually not that big of a deal, because one-tenth of a field was allotted for people in need. And the only problem was not that they were doing it. It was when they were doing it. They were doing it on the Sabbath day. For them, Saturday. So they asked him, what are your guys doing? You know you're not supposed to do that. So Jesus actually throws scripture at them and says, haven't you guys read about when David was, was um, eating the bread of the presence when Abithar was high priest? And he gave it to his, to his men? And only priests could eat that. He said, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. In other words, here's a rule in place, but you guys are getting it all wrong. See? And then, to hammer that point home, he goes to the temple, and here's a guy with a withered hand. And it's still the Sabbath. And they're watching him because they kind of know what's going to happen. Jesus tells them to come forward. And he turns to the people and says, So, is it okay to do bad or to do good or to do evil on the Sabbath? To, to save a life or to kill? They didn't say anything. And then, interestingly enough, it says that Jesus looked at them with anger. He was mad at them. Why? Because they were upset with him for breaking the Sabbath laws. And let me tell you about the Sabbath laws in Jesus' day. 
This is a list of 39 of the, of the Sabbath laws. Shall I read them to you? These are things you can't do on the Sabbath in Jesus' day. Carrying, burning, extinguishing, finishing, riding, erasing, cooking, washing, sewing, tearing, knotting, untying, shaping, plowing, planting, reaping, harvesting, threshing, winnowing, selecting, sifting, grinding, kneading, combing, spinning, dyeing, chain stitching, warping, weaving, unraveling, building, demolishing, trapping, um, shearing, slaughtering, skinning, tanning, smoothing, and marking. 39. But here's the thing. These aren't just the 39. These are categories. So there's like 10 more under each of these of the things that you can't do on the Sabbath. And here Jesus was breaking two of them. And he's supposed to be the king of kings and lord of lords. He's supposed to be the son of God. And he's breaking the Sabbath. Which, oh, by the way, that's one of the 10, right? That's one of the big ones. And he was breaking that commandment. Why? Why? Here's why. Because for God, people come first. People come first. And that's exactly what Jesus was showing. You see, we've got all of these laws that that we try to put on people. I call them minority laws. And and see if this doesn't ring true. Um, There are certain rules in Scripture that we will bang home hard... But it's usually the ones that the minority of the people are committing, right? So it used to be, for instance, divorce was a big one back in the day. Until more and more people got divorced. And now you don't hear, we, we, don't, we don't ring that bell real hard anymore. But the ones that a minority of the people commit is the ones that the church will beat that drum the hardest. Why? Well, because I ain't doing it, I can blame you. Right? Because if I'm not guilty, I can hang it around somebody else's neck. But see, is that what God wants from us? No. Because for God, people come first. It's not about following rules. It's about loving each other. It's about loving one another. I've said it many times. When it comes to being Christian, love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. If you can get those down, you're great. But what Jesus showed us is loving God and loving your neighbor doesn't necessarily mean following the rules as we have them right here. It means putting people first. And so as we, the church, tend tend to beat our drums and in the process beat other people over the head with things that we don't think they should be doing, the question we have to ask ourselves is, are we putting people first or are we putting rules first? Because in this passage, we see which one Jesus chooses. Which one are we going to choose? Are we going to place our rules over our brothers and sisters? Our Lord didn't. So my friends, I think it's time for us to look at ourselves. Now, that's not to say that it's going to make change easy or or that that we can just forget everything we were raised on. But I think we do need to challenge ourselves and and look at ourselves in the mirror and ask that question. What am I putting first? Am I putting being right or being in relationship? Because we know which one Jesus chooses. Let's be the church that puts people first. First. Let's be the one that shows the world exactly what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ. Because if the church, the Christian church, works together putting people where they should be, imagine the difference we could make in this community, in this state, in this world. We don't need more rules. We need to put people first. We need more love. Amen.
Please stand. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray for the world that you created, a world that you made good. We pray for those inhabitants as we struggle to get along as we try our best to put you first to put your people first and yet we are marred by sin and division we pray for those war-torn countries we pray for people who were in harm's way those who have no food those who have no home we pray for the leaders of these nations oh god that they may not do what's best for them but what's best for for your people. Lord, in your mercy. Bless our country, O oh God, as we move into an election season. We ask that our leaders would be chosen not by us, but by you. May they do that which you would call them to do. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our community, for all congregations that surround us. We ask that your gospel would be proclaimed. We pray for this congregation as we continue to seek another leader. We pray for the call committee and ask that your spirit be with them as they discern what is next. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit. Those who are sick, those who are grieving, and those who have lost hope. We especially remember today Otis Amick, Rick Cartner, Ken Hutto, Eleanor Rawl, Robin Smith, Wanda Amick, Donald and Jeanette Clamp, Evelyn Kiesler, and Roger Cease. Give them healing, hope, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid. Through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we offer our thanksgiving to God by offering the resources to the work of the church. The offering plates are coming around, but you can also give online. You can go to pisgagives.com. There's a QR code for that in your bulletin. You can use our church app. There's a QR code for that on the back of your bulletin. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, you can, you can uh, give in those ways as well. And those of you who aren't part of the Pisgah family, we encourage you to give to the church or ministry of your choice because God's work is done throughout the world as we all work together to make it happen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending We give you thanks, almighty and ever-living God, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to this world so that we may have life and life eternal. For it is he who, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gracious God, as we gather around your table, join us as one and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Everyone is welcome to come and receive the body and blood of Christ. After the worship leaders have communed, please make your way to the center aisle and around the altar rail, kneeling or standing as you are able. Those to my left, please begin at the front of the altar rail, and those to my right, please head around to the back. And after you've communed, please return to your seats by the side aisles for a time of prayer and thanksgiving. If for any reason you're not communing, we still invite you to come forward to receive a blessing. If you can't come forward, let our ushers know we'll bring this meal to you. And those of you who are worshiping with us online, we encourage you to commune as well as we say this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now come, the table is prepared.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace, share your gifts to show God's love.